Our next guest knows all about resilience in hard times, and his message is so important for us today. Retired Major General Bob Dees joins us now to talk about developing resilience God style. Bob, welcome to Real Life. Thank you, Tom. It's great to be with you. Well, let me ask, uh, where's home and how are things where you're at? Well, uh, kind of you to ask. Uh, we live in Round Rock, Texas, just north of Austin. And uh, it's mixed, probably just like it is across America. Some people are in the fight of their lives and other people are enjoying sunny days and nice walks. And it's everywhere in between. Just this morning, I've gotten text from a, a friend, a dear friend I had lunch with a couple weeks ago in Austin. His wife now has COVID-19. So they're sheltering in place. He's uh, exposed, obviously, uh, but as a caregiver, he's staying with her. And then the same from another friend in Norfolk, Virginia. So it's that way across the country. Uh, all of a sudden, without uh, any notice or warning, here it is on their doorstep instead of somebody else's. You know, uh, it is incredible. I have never seen it where something has affected the entire world to the level that this has. Oh, I agree. Well, it is pervasive. And Jesus said in the world, we will have tribulation. So we shouldn't be overly surprised by this. And then he challenges us to take courage. And David, in his days of anguish, talked about days of trouble. And so we have a day of trouble, but it's not just in individual lives. It's across the world, as you suggest. Well, your message of, re of resilience is uh, more pertinent than ever. And you know, when I think of resilience, I think of something that can, can sort of be bent but not broken, you know, like something that is so strong that even though it can take the hardest things and, and, and it'll come back to where it should. Can you define resilience for me? Sure, well, uh, many people think resilience is bouncing back, but I think resilience has an entire life cycle associated with it. It's not just bouncing back, but how do we prepare for the storms of life? How do we weather the storms of life, hiding under the shelter of God's wings until the destruction passes by? And then after the fact, how do we bounce back, looking back introspectively, see what we learned, looking forward, learning to sing a new song and comfort others with that which we've been comforted? And then because hurricane season comes around again and again, Tom, uh, we have to get ready. Uh, we have to prepare again. We have to get better, wiser, stronger through adversity. Uh, you talked about uh, analogies. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I use the analogy yes, of a it. tennis ball or an egg. You're familiar with Humpty Dumpty. He yes. sat on a wall, he had a great fall. They couldn't put him together. So our goal, our desire to be truly resilient is that we're tennis balls. We get beaten about, as it says, troubled but not crushed, in doubt but not in despair, etc. cetera. Uh, but the point is we want to be tennis balls. And we want to be, in, in fact, in God's economy, not by power, by might, but by my spirit, we want to bounce higher than ever before as we go through adversity. Well, that, that is such a good illustration because, you know, we, uh, we all know that, that uh, little nursery rhyme. And there is no way to put an egg back together once it's been broken. But, of course, um, you know, th th you shared a little bit out of 2 Corinthians just there. And I'd like to read the whole verse. It's on your website, and uh, uh, your website's just a, a, a full of wonderful information. But uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9 says this, For we are often troubled, but not crushed, sometimes in doubt, but never in despair. There are many enemies, but we are never without a friend. And though badly hurt at times, we are not destroyed. What a tremendous promise and, and, and declaration of just reality for the Christian. Amen. And, and the next verse says, always caring about in our bodies the life of Christ, the death of Christ, so that the life of Christ may also be manifested in us. So, you know, as we go through this adversity, we really can be merchants of hope because we're caring about the life of Christ. And, and in America today, in the world today, hope is a, a, a highly needed commodity. And we, of all people, should be able to convey hope to others. Well, and let's talk about that. What do you say to someone who's right in the middle of the storm right now? Or maybe this, the second part of this question. How about somebody who's come through the storm, but they didn't do very well? What do you say to that person as they move forward? Yeah, on your latter question, Tom, I would say I, in, the, in the book, Resilience God Style, I address this. And I... I talk about after the storm, and one of the key principles is to guard our primary relationships. It's interesting that we seem to attack the ones we love the most as we go through crisis or after crisis. Uh, and, and those are the ones we need to lean into, the, the people that we need to connect with and develop genuine relationships. Secondly, 
We've got to choose forgiveness and gratitude. Whether it's coronavirus or the economic downturn or whatever it is, we need to loosen our grip on that thing called bitterness, the poison that we drink. Uh, and in this case, we have experienced loss. And there's an opportunity to be bitter or to be grateful. We need to choose gratitude. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, I, I would say as we move forward, we need to learn to sing a new song, uh, regain our vital optimism, and then spread that with others. It's infectious. We want that to be infectious in addition to the virus. And then finally, we need to revalidate our calling because God has put us in this world, has put us on a path for a purpose. And, and he, his purpose didn't change as we went through adversity. It's just how do we live out that purpose within uh, an adverse environment? My, my personal mission statement is to promote uh, resilience uh, to individuals, leaders, and nations uh, for the purpose of restoration uh, of uh, for the purpose of restoration. So the point is, uh, in this adversity, you know, in the storm, I'm doing a lot of this to promote resilience, uh, so that people might have the biblical principle principles that allow them to truly succeed and weather the storm and bounce higher than before. Well, I love how clear that is, you know, point by point, because a lot of times when we're in that midst. It just seems like one gigantic monolithic thing that we cannot figure out how to get out of. But there are principles and there are uh, truths that help us. One of the things that I saw um, that you mentioned is well of courage, that we have a well of courage and it's constantly being filled and depleted, depleted and filled. Could you speak to that a little bit? Oh, of course. Well, we all have that. And uh, we, we know that maybe uh, uh, fractious teenagers uh, deplete our well of courage. Or we may know that an inspiring movie fills our well of courage. And so we need to be aware, it says guard your heart. So we, and, and courage is the root word for heart, core. And we need to guard our hearts. We need to fill our hearts with courage. How do we do that? Well, first, uh, we, we look to God. You know, just as you have done in this show uh, this morning and, and every morning, you look to God and you recognize he is the great God. And it says he holds the oceans in the hollow of his hand and, and he measures the heavens by the span of his fingers. That's incredible when you focus on God uh, and that's, that's the primary resource. And then secondly, we need to focus on the biblical characters that have uh, so inspired us. Think about David. You know, uh, this notion of remembering God's goodness refills our well of courage. David, when he went against Goliath, remembered the lion and the bear and the success and how God had been with him. And so each of us have experienced God's goodness in the past in various ways. This is a time to remember that and to fill ourselves. I say put in the IV, Tom. I'm not talking about the IV for a saline solution or something. I'm talking about the IV of God's Word, a 10-minute devotion in the midst of a pandemic or another life crisis just doesn't get it. We need to totally immerse ourselves with music, with movies, with encouraging things, with the Word of God, with fellowship with one another that allows us to have that nourishment that we so need. We need to fill ourselves, as your pastor there said, with living waters to refill our well of courage. Well, that is so good. You know, you, uh, Bob, you've written uh, books about uh, resilient leaders, resilient warriors. Is there anybody that you really have admired over the years, your study of history, or maybe you've known personally that just uh, as, as a person that really speaks to you? Well, uh, you asked me that question, I'll get a little teary. <laughs> uh, I think of many people. One that comes to mind is uh, Gary Bikirk. Gary Bikirk is the chaplain of the Medal of Honor Society. He's a recipient of the Medal of Honor himself. Uh, he, his story is a, a wonderful story of resilience. He was beaten down in the Vietnam War. He was further beaten down when he came back uh, from uh, the war and was spit upon. And yet this man went to live in a cave in New Hampshire for a season. He and his wife met in that experience. And then for the last 50 years, through their wonderful marriage, he has been a high school counselor. Wow. And he has, as a Medal of Honor recipient who could be doing anything, he chose to go counsel uh, high school young adults, teaching them how to be resilient, teaching him, them how to understand 
the greatness of America, teaching them how to navigate adversity. So he's a great profile in resilience among many others. I, I have a lot of those on the website, by the way. Yes, and I, uh, your website is just filled with information. You even have a resilience game that people can be involved in. Just wonderful, uh, so many wonderful things there. Uh, Bob, I appreciate you being with us today. Uh, your website, we'll put it on uh, a link on our website, ctvn.org. We will link to your website. And I would encourage everyone out there to, uh, to, to be involved in, in what you have. This is a time more than ever that we need resilience. Bob, thank you so much for being with us. Amen, Tom, great to be with you. God bless you guys and God bless America and what they're wrestling with right now. Amen. Thank you and uh, stay safe.